Hello everyone, and welcome to the loser's bracket of the Castle League. Straight after the last one. Let's go through the players. We have Yu Eugen, as mechanized company for the United States of America. Professor, as Royal Tang Regiment with Hammer Specialization. We have Kahoot, as Propaganda Tactics for the Waffen SS. And Tekkit, as Straf Division for the Wehrmacht. Oh, it's gonna be Quantity Axis. Yeah, so, um... Ticket and Kahoot lost the last one, which now means they moved on to the losers bracket, which we will see at the end of today. Which is gonna be Professor and Eugen they are facing. I have a feeling, though, this is gonna be an interesting match, because uh, Eugen, to my understanding, is pretty good and competent, and so is Professor. We'll need to see what uh, Kahoot and Ticket does with uh, quantity access. Volksturm and... Uh, Staff troops, that's a lot of uh, mixed units, a lot of very cheap units they're getting onto the field. I just need to see what the British do, because Royal Tank can actually scale really well late game because of all the Churchills they get access to. And the Churchill is an amazing heavy tank. Looks like Eugene is going for some riflemen and then straight into cavalry troopers, and you need infantry to be able to, to uh, mechanize. I generally always just use the cavalry troopers if I'm instead of the riflemen if I'm playing as mechanized because I think it's more thematic. That's just my own personal opinion. Pay have already secured a lot of points, but they're not actually taking the cutoff. So that means they're not gonna get they're not getting anything off these Infantry off these points actually. That's a little bit of a waste of time early on. Or wasted resources early on. They're not being contested around the field by the staff troops yet. The Americans are going to be able to take the field point here with ease by the looks of it. Staff troops are going to open fire here once they spot the rear echelon. But the British are pushing up quite aggressively. Oh, and the Volksturm are just taking heavy losses. You also have an MG08 coming out. Old World War One machine gun used by the Volksturm. Storm Pioneers are in trouble. Yeah, that's just pushing up aggressively here. Yeah, it's not looking good for the Axis already. But the British are taking some losses trying to push up this time. Probably because it's like cover and the box step up behind heavy cover right here. Pioneer is pulling back. Grenadiers and the staff troops are not going to last up against all, this, uh, against all these American infantry. MD-42 is arriving though. MG-8 opening fire. Surprisingly competent machine gun. A lot of the old machine guns are still very competent just because it's still a machine gun. It fires bullets very, very fast. And that's generally all you need. Mills bomb going in on these box them. That didn't do much, actually. I think the Mills bomb is a little bit underwhelming because, as I remember, mm, the Mills bomb was actually exceptionally powerful to the point that it was very hard to get far enough away to not be hit by shrapnel. But well, that might be the World War One version I'm thinking of. Hmm. Okay. Oh, to set up over here. The Germans still have a little bit of territory to work with, and they're still holding a munitions point. But the Allies hold a lot of territory, and that's going to allow them to get a lot of resources to work with. Oh, we actually have common in here, armed with carbines. 
The company Nis is another cool unit you can get as mechanized, and I believe they also serve as a call-in for armor, as we saw in the last um in the last match. That's a great on the American position. Oh, that actually killed a lot of them. Holy shit. That was a lethal grenade right there. MT should probably have some infantry to support as it moves up. You don't want to move your machine gun up on its own. Especially not against people who have pineapples. Deep also coming up. Yep, and there it goes. Deep with a vertical. Mobile suppression platform. You only don't move your machi heavy machine guns up without infantry support first. That's a very important thing to note. And the Volkster, we're gonna try and hold this flank. Another MG08, oh god, we're just seeing a lot of Volkster being called in. Young boys and very old men, some of them likely veterans of the First World War. Horrible, horrible stuff. A little uh, last-ditch defense here from the Germans against the overwhelming Allied forces that are pushing into Germany. MG8 opening fire here too. Again, do not underestimate the MG8. It's a still a pretty competent machine gun. That's if you armed with scopes? Okay. And I don't know if the MG-08 could get scopes. And again, I rarely use the MG-08. I generally just prefer to use the MG-42 or the MG-34. Storm Pioneers from, uh, the, from the Straf Division. Very good and competent assault unit, if utilized correctly. Lots of Volksturm on the front line here. Let's see what I can do here in for this position. Oxtum is pulling back for some reason. Might fuss this grenade. Sectors, all sectors. Ability now ready. M3 half tracks bearing assault engineer. British forces moving up here with Bren guns. It's the Bren gun Mark II. Enemy infantry firing. That's a lot of firepower right there. The Volkstum are getting overrun on the other flanks. The Bren guns is being too much for them. The Bren gun is remarkably no, remarkably accurate. Plus they can fight on the move, which is a pretty neat little thing. Grenade from the Volkstum. Oh, that's a good grenade! Stormgrenade is now being called in the box, they're just taking too many losses. Now the flax can open fire. Bren gun is moving in. Open carrier, rather. But the flak can hit it. And yeah, German's getting base locked pretty soon if they cannot find a way to push out. That's well, that was a rapid response artillery, I think. Stand to, man. The time on target, yeah, time on target, that's what it means. So all the shells land almost, almost immediately next to each one another. Storm Grenadier is coming out here armed with the Volk Sturm Gewehr. A cheaper, a cheaper version of the Sturm Gewehr that was designed at the very end of the war. MG08 supporting the uh, Wehrmacht on this end. Another flak position going up. The flak gun is generally a very competent uh, def base defense weapon, so 
I'm surprised it's there. That's a fuel cache though, that will blow up quite intensely. At least it's not a munitions cache. A munitions cache can become quite an explosion. There we go, Vox Tim GVS armed. Lieutenant waiting behind here. Oh, a demo charge. I guess I didn't know the lieutenant for the British Army could get demo charges. Then again, the lieutenant is, as I've noticed, is very much a combat unit since he's a five man. So I guess he has a lot of other duties on the front line. We're going in on the machine gun. Did not hurt anyone. Stormtroopers being prepared from the Waffen SS. A little bit of lag. MG 34 for the Straf troops. Black gun is now present. They're gonna have to move quickly there. The grandiers need to notice. Oh, that's a that's a late fuse, and that actually is gonna give them time to get out of there. That's a late fuse. That's a really powerful thing. Oh my God, we have the free French. We have a free French uh, squad present, so I guess the free French is on the field. And with a Fusil, Fusil Mitrailleur Model 9, I am not good at uh, French weapons. It's like a BAR with like a bar, with like a brand, gun, brand like magazine, so that's a cool little thing. We do not see the free, free French use much. They, can, they actually have impact grenades. I, I may expect to see a lot more free friend stuff in uh, coming here's free, hopefully. Captain leading the charge, probably not the guy who should be leading it, exactly. Pulling an artillery there. A command post vehicle promotion is available. There we go, they have stormtroopers here. Blue line recon run going overhead. Which the flag shoot down. Half track with the engineers coming in. But the flags is just too much. With a peak grenade going in though. No, that's a satchel charge. Oh, that's painful. Lieutenant is still present. Which is more or less keeping uh, uh, taps on the German forces. It looks like the Americans are still engaging with the Wehrmacht briefly. Using their BARs to the advantage here. Lieutenant moving up in the open. Probably not the best place for him to be. Artillery going in the SS position. That's a pretty cool with the time on target. That's just not enough to follow up with at the moment. The Germans can quickly get back into position if they want. But the British are just moving in, and the Germans are not moving back into their fighting positions. But good. Also, uh, delayed fuse on the flak position, destroying it. Here comes the British. Grenades. And there might be smoke for us coming in. Yep. One flash it. And the British are very aggressive with their bring guns right here. A2 Sherman pushing up here alongside some free French forces. With a high explosive shell probably on the machine gun. Are you smoking it?
Now the three French are moving up. We have a veteran Sophie uh, Cromwell coming in. Oh, it's an observation. It's an observation post Cromwell. Okay. So it's also serving as a essentially a, an area to call in artillery from, I think. Or at least coordinate the artillery, I believe. The Americans are soon going to have the equipment, which they even have a Scot. Deep down. I think the free French died? Yeah, the free French is gone. That sucks. Pansy is moving out in the open. Gibaldang, Gibaldang attempt. From will uh, Mark Six, I believe. Mark Six observation tank is doing its best here. Panzerfaust from the Volkstum could be a problem though, which is why he's pulling back. A two high explosive somewhat missed. Hit the storm grenadiers instead. They want to take out the flak guns. Scott is driving up again. And Scott can be quite lethal as a mobile howitzer. Yeah, it's aiming for the Panzerjägers, but the Panzerjägers are a very small target. It's not looking good here. Started basically pushing up into the German base from their angle with all their Bren guns. Scott and Sherman working very well together. Pack's supposed to be going in the pack. Good shot. For an entire crew. The brain guns are just cutting through the Germans. Oh, the uh, Scott lost its gun, but it can still fire? What the fuck? That seems like a bug. That's definitely a bug. That probably has to be looked at. Now the problem with the Bren gun is it's so accurate, it actually tends to be very bad at suppression. Because if you actually want to suppress, you actually don't want the most accurate gun available. You want something that fires a lot of bullets that spread around everywhere so the enemy gets terrified. Artillery going in on the uh, German base. American troops pushing up, but there's a good position here. Artillery going in on them though. That's gonna be a lot of delayed fuse, I think. Yeah, that's a late fuse. Ah, oh, but they didn't even need it. They just needed a high explosive shot from the Sherman. But outside of his tracks, not that there's much to deal with it currently. I think the Allies have this covered. We have more free French forces coming in. Oh, don't they? oh that's the same free French squad. I just, I'm just blind. I think. Riflemen are now equipped with observation packages. Got a crowd mower coming in. Doesn't even look like Royal Tank had to get any other tank, but at Cromwell. And obviously, another Cromwell they're getting. So, quite aggressively uh, destroyed here. I don't think the Germans have the chance. Germans pushing up again. Probably try and take out the other flag if they can. And tracks are gone again. That's the one advantage of flag. It's really good at stopping tracks. Clear. 
Because it has got an increased uh, armor on, an increased armor ability, or whatever it's called. There's a major reporting for action. I think it doesn't increase the armor by looks of it, only health. Also, it slows down the Sherman a bit. I think the idea is that they just put a lot more sandbags and stuff on it, improvised armor like the Americans like to do. You need to destroy that flak gun. There it goes. And the Germans are essentially taken care of. Looks like they are determined to fight to the end or something. Not that they have much left to fight with. Here come the free French. I would actually like to see Ameri an American commander in the future if they add more commanders to spearheads. That's focused entirely around free French, or perhaps to the British, I'm not sure. As I enjoy the free French stuff. That's a really cool little addition. New Storm Pioneers just got cut down. This is destroyed last building, and then this is over. Come on, just destroy the last one. It just requires one more shell. If you could hit. There you go. And it looks like it's gonna be Eugen and... What's the name? Professor. That essentially is gonna win the... Uh, I believe this was the losers, uh, the losers bracket of Cashel. Yes, yes it was. So congratulations to them. And we'll see the finals of the Cashel bracket tomorrow. Bye bye.